What's going on, YouTube? It's Donnie B all day. <coughs> Before I get started, I got two things to tell you. One, I went to uh, I went to Costco and I bought these things called uh, chicken bakes. And what it is, it's kind of like a big ass hot pocket, pretty much. It's really good. Uh, but there's like juice and stuff in there and when you heat it up you're supposed to let it sit for a couple minutes and cool before you eat it i'm not that guy when i cook something and it's done i just pop it in my mouth right away doing that i burned the crap out of my lip look at that and got a blister on my lip it's not herpes so relax i'm not going to transmit anything to you through the video second thing um somebody was mentioning something about how they appreciate that I don't do intros and there's a reason for that because if I clicked on a video somewhere and there's a big intro I am going to fast forward the hell out of that to get through it because nobody comes onto a video thinking there's this one knife I want to see I want to take a look at but before you show it to me what I really want is some cheesy elevator music ding, 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 ding. and a whole bunch of flashbacks oh look at me look at what i do you're gonna see me work with it during the video so why do i need to show you pieces of me working something else sometime else when i'm about to show you the same damn thing so um i don't do crappy intros uh i think it's a waste of time hope that answers the question uh yeah intros suck you all know that if you're watching videos it's like, come on, man, a minute later, you're going to finally start. Today, back on track, I am bringing you a bushcraft knife. And it's budget. This guy you can find under 20 bucks, Under $20. And I have to say that it's pretty, pretty good and it's well worth it. Um, let's see, is that upside down? Yeah, and the reason it was upside down is because I was holding it like this because the sheath is ambidextrous. And before I get into this uh, little elk ridge, I want to go over this sheath. You have a belt loop with Velcro, so you can take it on and off without having to undo the belt. However, um, remember that Velcro over time will wear out. You know what I mean? It's like a, any good relationship. Over time, it's just going to wear out. So I just use the belt on and off, and I do not adjust it by the Velcro. You do have molly straps. So if you want to put it on a vest or a bag, bada boom, bada bing, you can gear that up. Here's something interesting. This, on, especially on cheap knives, not cheap knives, but budget knives, um, you get this really crappy nylon string. I'm not even going to call it cord. It's string. It's no good. This is 550 cord. It's got all the goodies inside, and you can pull it apart and use the internals to make fire or you can use this as a leg strap or you know if it's bushcraft you're doing your bushcraft you're needing you know this is always great for traps and shelters and, and makeshift bows i believe it's around seven feet of length which is good the nylon is pretty thick and pretty sturdy it's not one of those cheap ones this isn't flapping over um that's not too bad it does have a little uh, snap and with the snap a little pull tab so you don't have to torque your snap and possibly break it one of the other things it has is a little pocket a little pocket that's actually good and there's like no rattle that's the pin that you hear i mean the the, uh, the this thing <laughs> this thing the snap you, the, you know the actual word for it thing um if it's snapped look at that no noise weird for a um plastic lined nylon sheath to not make noise bonus um so let's go over these these contents in this pocket all right i'm gonna take that out there uh, i'm going to take this out here and i'm going to take this out here because this pocket has not just one not just two but three um three different little things one you have the amazing sharpening stone this thing is world class um actually it's just a cheesy little rough stone. However, if you are out and you do come up with a little chip or some dulling, something is better than nothing. And, um, oh, that's like Catholic churchy. Something is better than nothing. Amen. Um, so, uh, so having this, while it's not the greatest stone in the world, 
it will be the greatest stone in the world if it's the only stone you have. So, not too shabby. Second, we have a ferro rod. Not the biggest ferro rod, but it's a ferro rod. And we have a striker. Ooh, did you see the spark? I just, I just literally rubbed some of the black off it, so... So, there you go. You can see that. So it does create spark. You do have a ambidextrous style striker. It's on both sides. And then you have this big flat piece. And one of the cool things, too, is Elk Ridge actually puts her name on it. That's kind of cool. Um, it does have a strap, just like the ferro rod does have a strap. Um, and this, I believe, is just little, uh, little twisty, crappy string. Um, however, but you look at this flat end right here, and you're like, okay, so that's just the end of the striker. No big deal, right? Big deal. Big deal. So, this is the knife. And before I get into what that is, I'm just going to show you this guy. It is a hollow grind. I would have preferred either a saber or a flat grind. But, hollow grind is better for, um, you know, coming sharp. And for really getting into wood and, and skinning, things like that. You can really, really make um, some waves with a hollow grind as far as... Uh, getting through things easy makes it weaker for chopping don't forget but it's a bushcraft knife and if you're a bushcrafty guy you probably have a big camp knife or a machete or hatchet things like that so who cares about the chopping um, I have the stats behind this thing so if my eyes are going all over the place it's because I'm reading you uh, we have ten and a half inches overall we have uh, five and a quarter inch uh, long blade it's 440, but I believe it's 440A variety. I don't think it's just 440. I believe it is A uh, or Alpha for all my fellow military guys. And it is 5 millimeters thick, so they do not chintz you on the girth of this guy. It's true full tang, um, true full tang and it is skeletonized, and there's a reason it's skeletonized. I'm going to show you. We do have a lanyard hole and our pins are screws, so the glass-filled nylon handle can be removed. So, this flat end, this is what this is for. This is pretty good right here. Um, what you wanna do is take one out. You don't have to take both out. I know some people think because there's two, you have to take them both out. You don't. Um, you use that little flat end as a screwdriver and I'm trying not to drop it, so I'm going slow. But let's see, let me unscrew it a little bit more. Do, 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 do. Uh, there we go. So I take one half out. It's pretty simple, it's just two screws. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna loosen the other the other half, right? And it's just a screw, so if you don't know how that works, sorry guys. Um, so I'm gonna loosen that. So I have a little bit of wiggle room here. And now I'm going to lift and I'm going to twist. And the reason you loosen this one is so you can give it a little bit of room to get over this bag. Uh, here's your skeletonized handle. It works out pretty well. It's five millimeters thick, so I'm not worrying about losing anything there. Um, and it does balance the weight out really nice. So what do we have in here? We have needles and we have matches and we have thread. There are no hooks in this. However, if you are bushcrafty enough and you have uh, a nice rock with a crack in it, you can put one of your needles inside the crack of a rock and begin to bend it or lightly bang it with the uh, spine of your knife. And you can eventually curl a sewing needle into a hook and actually catch fish with that. Um, the texturing here on this, as you can see, it's kind of rough right there. You can light a match with that. Um, I haven't tried yet, but let's do that together. We're in the house. We're sitting around. we got tons of flammable stuff around. Let's light matches. Hey! All right, so let me just uh, twist this handle back on slightly. So now, in theory, that's what this black coating is supposed to do. And it could be crap matches, but I'm just rubbing the match off of that. So let's go back to our sharpening stone. And I don't know if I rubbed off all the stuff, but what I am not getting is fire. So 
the matches are kind of crap. Why this doesn't matter to me at all is because I have different kits that I, that I would use for fishing and things like that. Needle and thread is important, especially if you're cutting yourself out there. You want to be able to sew up your, your own holes. Uh, make sure you sew up the right holes because sewing up the wrong holes can leave you uh, backed up. So, um, basically, there we go. I got it back on. Basically, the matches suck. So, what I do is I take some cotton balls and I put a little Vaseline on them and then I shove a bunch of them in there, as many as I can fit. And then I put this back on and once I'm done with this, I'll go get my cotton balls again and do that. Um, the reason is because a Vaseline coated cotton ball takes a spark like nobody's business. It lights fast, it lights strong, and a cotton ball will burn a little bit longer than um, like dryer lint. So that's a little uh, trick for you guys out there who are wanting to... Uh, light fires without needing matches if you have a ferro rod and a striker all you have to have is some cotton balls with a little vaseline on it or you can even just literally fill this hole with vaseline and um, then when you create tinder you can use that vaseline to light that tinder to light a lot easier um, cotton balls i just um, have a lot of faith in because they stay lit longer um, they burn pretty well and you only need a little bit of Vaseline on them and it catches so fast. So let's go over this guy right here. Uh, you do have a squared spine. So I'm assuming if you lost your striker, you could use your spine to light it. However, um, I am an avid um, use the end of the knife guy, the end of the edge for uh, lighting a ferro rod over the spine. There's no reason to use a spine if you don't have to when you have all this real estate right here that you are not using. So um, overall, the knife feels really, really good in the hand. I love that it's five, um, five millimeter stick. I think the only thing this thing could use to um, improve its looks would be some liners and it would look gorgeous, but then liners would take away um, from your ability to stuff stuff in there, unless you used a skeletonized liner, then it would look really good. It doesn't do anything for the knife, but it makes it look nice. So, um, I say we go outside and we bushcraft this little bushcrafter and, um, see what we can't do with this little elk ridge. I want to show you the, the grind here. It's, it's shaped. If you could really, really see it, it's got this cool Roman gladius looking shape to it. How it comes down to a point and then it comes down again. Really cool. Like a mini tiny little Roman gladius. But uh, I'm digging it. Let's see what it says on here. Let's see what it says. Uh, I don't know if you don't know because there we go. Oh, it's got the model number and all that. Just says stainless. Um, but on this side it just says Elk Ridge Bushcraft. I have to say that um, of all the budget brands... Elk Ridge is one of my favorites because they make realistic knives, not a bunch of fantasy daggers and weird crap. I know they're put out by um, by doo -doo -doo -doo. another another company who, for some reason, I can't think of. Oh, hold on. I have one of their knives down here that is waiting to be reviewed. Um, I know I do. I know I do. Oh, there it is. All right, so I haven't brought this to you yet, but I will. Um, little Punisher blade. Ah, pinched my finger. Oh, M-Tech, that's right. M-Tech puts these out. The same people that make this make this. Um, but uh, I'll be bringing that to you eventually. Just a little, there's a story and a reason that I picked out this pattern, and I'll tell you guys eventually. But um, so this thing is put out by same guys as them the difference is where they will put out some weird fantasy stuff these guys are strictly um like camping hiking bushcrafting type knives uh they stay true to the wilderness game and they make pretty decent knives at, at prices anyone can afford anyone who has at least 20 bucks so not too bad let's go outside and stop talking about this crap all right so let us begin. Remember, this is a hollow grind, so this is not going to be a prying 
type knife. However, I would still use this to open clams and mussels and things like that. So I would still be able to use it to open up food that I can catch in the wetlands. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a couple of uh, four foot drops and see how the balance rides. All right, started to kick over in the rear a little bit. Let's see if that was me. Well, it does kick over a little bit, even though it's a, it's a, uh, oh no, that, that goes pretty straight. Maybe it was me. Um, <coughs> it's skeletonized in the rear, so I figured that the, that the front is going to hold all the weight. So now what I want to do, even though I know these are screwed on and I tightened them, do a couple downward throws. That'll test if these are going to loosen on their own, and we will see how this tip holds up. Ooh, man, that was actually pretty solid. Uh-oh. I missed. We've never seen that before. All right, so that's good right there. Let's uh, let's pick up this nylon rope here and see if we can't do a push cut. Uh, okay, push cut. It removed some. It did cut some, um, maybe a quarter. But by pushing alone, nothing serious. However, it is sharp enough to cut straight through with just a little. Uh, just a little back and forth action. So no push cut, however, push forward cut, that goes straight through the nylon. I wonder if we can get a little, uh... holy mackerel. When I finally hit it, that really worked. That was a beautiful cut. So you can see that it's really, really sharp. Um, like a sharp dressed man, except woman. Um, Cause it's sexy. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see what we can do here. Uh -huh. Okay, I got myself a nice log here, and I don't know if this baton's going to hold up. There's no weight to it, but I do have my Walking Dead Rick Grimes axe, the axe gang from Cold Steel, so I might just use that. We'll see if we can't split this log here. All right. Now, I have to be careful because I don't want to use this on the very tip because that's how you break a tip. And for all my male viewers out there, breaking the tip is not good. All right, so I want to use, use the baton to see if it'll work. I already started at an angle because I didn't want to hit the tip and now I have to fight through that angle. I should have probably chose the knot sides down, but I didn't. So we're making it actually harder for the knife by going through these knots. Uh-oh. I knew my baton wasn't going to last. It's batoning well, but um, the baton is kind of crap. So I might have to try and use my little axe here. Gotta be careful. See myself already hitting the tip. You know, I'm left handed. I don't know why I'm doing it right handed. Maybe I'll get better aim if I use my proper hand. And it's working better. So it's batoning pretty well. I gotta straighten my knife out here. It's going through with ease. Nothing's loosening or breaking. I like that. Dogs going nuts, but that's their job, I guess. Straighten that out again. I could have picked a better log, something not so sappy. And I don't mean like, you know, sad movie sappy. I mean, this thing's got a lot of sap in it. It's an old Christmas tree. So let's see. And this is why, guys, batoning should be done with something like this rather something like this. And I am got these huge knots everywhere. So it's kind of slow me down, but as you can see, it's working. So now that things have been cut in half, I can guarantee 
it's going to be a whole lot easier to make this wood smaller and it is so let's check let's check the edge i did get a little loosening in the handle but that's why it comes with a screwdriver i have no issues with this edge and i mean zero issues with this edge and if you're counting from zero up then that's a pretty good number zero is none zilch um pretty good and let's see the 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 loosening is just barely um but i have the means to, to uh to tighten it right there on the sheath um i just tightened it with my finger actually so let's get into let's get into some other stuff here i don't know where my dogs went let's uh knock some of this down take it off look at that just cruising straight through just cruising straight through with sap all over the edge look at that that's just nice so let's try and do some pulls now for this all you do is you dig your knife into some wood and then you pull against the the edge with the wood rather than the other way around what does that do is it gives you some really really nice curls i mean these are like light in an instant curls i might even keep these because those are nice those are nice i'll probably pack them up and mail them to someone as a gift here you go all right so it works like that let's see oh yeah you can do some pushes and i'm getting a lot of the same kind of stuff and right here this is what it's all about is trying to keep them on there so now I'm going to do it my style. A lot of people don't do this, but I like to. I'm going to pull toward me because I can really flex the entire blade. And um, it creates really, really nice tight curls by doing it that way. I like that method. I just put it against my chest and I pull. So now let's see if we can't make a point here. And I don't mean like make a point like, you know, something to say about it. I don't know where my other dog. Okay, he's rolling around the snow. Anybody else have a bloodhound that likes to roll around in the snow and scratches back in the snow? My other dog doesn't do that, just the bloodhound. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm spinning the stick in a circle and chopping down at it. So it gives me a, uh, a quicker, a quicker uh, point. So instead of doing this for an hour and a half, you just chop down on it and uh, this becomes very, very quick. So you're making spears, you're making arrows, you're making darts, you're making pit spikes, trapping animals for food, then that's the important stuff. You need that kind of stuff. Um, let's see, do I have anything I can make a little, uh, there we go, here we go. So now for notching, woo wee. I mean, this is Bushcraft 101 right here, things like notching and getting through wood and stuff like that but oh, hold on where were we all right so made that little notch right there so what i'm gonna do now is make another one right next to it make a nice square notch hit my thumb rather hit my thumb with the baton than with the blade so that's all right can't be mad about that so uh here we go got a nice little square notch my lincoln log notch just easy money I mean easy money this thing right here is just made for this kind of stuff just made for it so actually let's do this let's do this let's make a double I'm actually just pound in both real quick pound them both in real quick and uh, show you some shortcuts here we go notches are um, extremely important in the wilderness for wilderness survival because it's the best way to keep two pieces of, of wood together you know what I mean if, if you're building a shelter you're building a trap or you're building a chair even um, being able to notch especially you see how that goes around now I can go around all the way if I want make complete square all around it just makes things so much easier for attaching pieces together you know if I did that to another piece Actually, I'll do that to another piece real quick. 
uh, uh, just make a nice little square here and I'm gonna make one just a little bit thinner than the one I just made all right so that's half of that one and you know if you're talking about being in the woods for a while creature comforts like a chair you don't realize how big that is until you actually make one and use it so that little square right there of course I chose a bigger bigger stick but that little square right there if I open this one up more will fit into that just absolutely beautifully beautifully and then I'll have like I could do it from right here right there it fits in see how that fits I can push this pull this and it's locked in there I'm literally pushing my left hand toward the uh away from me pushing my left hand away from me and if I put this down and push look at this Ugh. now I'm gonna pull it toward me well okay now I'll pull it toward me you see how it's locked on there that's that's what those notching is gonna do you put those together you do a little wrap a little tie job bada boom bada bing that's all day long bushcraft right there um, I have to say so far this guy right here is a bushcraft knife and this is under 20 bucks you know what I mean? You could spend a bunch of money and go get, you know, go get yourself an Ontario, a little rat. And this thing might do the same job. How long will it do the same job for? I don't know. I just started using this. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to give this a bunch of work. I'm going to have to come out here at least once a week, use this knife, do different things with it, and see after however long I use it for, how it's holding up and compare it to some of the more expensive knives because if this thing can do what it's showing me so far then i gotta say hickory dickory doc mama this thing right here is going to be a little survivor right here i'm telling you so far the elk ridge boys is that like a country band or something the elk ridge boys um the elk ridge boys or oak ridge boys uh, made themselves a pretty sweet little bushcraft knife. Um, it's comfortable in the hand. It's easy to use because of that hollow grind. It makes carving and things like that just simple. Um, the only thing we don't know is if it will stick into something if I throw it. So let's go throw this thing. All right, let me go back five yards. Take this for a little spin. <laughs> well, that didn't take long. That didn't take long at all. This thing, um, when I held it, it left my hand with like grace and ease. That thing was nice. That thing was nice. That sharp, sharp point right there, that very narrow point, when it hit, it just sank. And it's, it's cold. It's frozen. Man, that's sweet. So we know it throws. Well, here we have it. What a fun little knife. The Elk Ridge Bushcraft Knife. And that's literally what it's called, the Bushcraft Knife. And it is definitely, and without a doubt, a Bushcraft Knife. I know because I just Bushcrafted with it. So, the thing works. Not only does it work, but it's a good looking knife. It's just a, it's handsome. It's a good looking knife. The thing works well. It held up to my, to my immediate testing. And now it's time to find out if it's gonna hold up long term and just by how it performed today and how well the edge is now, um, especially banging on it with this. Whoop, there it is. I was banging on it with this. And uh, I have no issues on the spine. I didn't crack or anything like that. The edge looks great. The handle stayed on. Um, everything about this guy is worth it. Oh, and, and one thing I didn't mention, because I told you guys that I don't, I don't, keep those matches and the needles inside that handle what i did is i put it in the pouch so it's actually in here i am keeping that kind of stuff because if i light a fire with a ferro rod and i take one of those matches and i ignite the sulfur i can transfer fire quite easily doing that just you know over a little bit so if i have another piece of something i can transfer the fire with a match instead of having to strike the ferro rod for a second time um so it does have a use um Outside of that, the needles and thread always have a use, even as makeshift uh, fishing hooks. Um, but the inside of my handle will have uh, cotton balls with Vaseline on them. 
and because that's how I roll. Um, but all in all, it's a good knife. And it's a great deal. It's a great deal. Um, the money for this, this knife well exceeds the cost. Uh, I can't wait to use it some more and see how really far this thing is going to be pushed because I think just by using it and getting my hands on it and feeling it and seeing how it lasted and survived just what I did, I think that this knife has a lot of promise. I really do. Um, good knife, great price, and, well, you have me. <laughs> I'm Donnie B. All Day. Until next knife.